Hi and welcome to another episode of Delaware County Political News. I am your host, Larry DeMarco, and we are here with Tony Campisi, former chair of the Marple Newtown Democrats and also former vice chair of the Delaware County Democratic Party. If you didn't have an opportunity to watch, please catch part one of Tony Campisi discussing county issues. And now we're going to discuss some issues particular to Marple Newtown. Tony, you served as chairman of the Marple Newtown Dems for 20 years. What was your role is, as a uh, local chair? The role, my role as a local chair really encompassed everything. Um, jack of all trades, I guess, is what you could call a local party chairperson. At least that's the approach that I took. Um, I organized the camp, the, the party. I recruited committee people, recruited volunteers, recruited candidates, raised money, organized campaigns, um, you know, circulated petitions, you name it, I did it. Um, I view, viewed my role as the party chair as a full-time position. I did not approach it as a part-time job. Um, you know, I was all in, and I think that was an important approach to take, particularly uh, during the time that I uh, came on as chairman in 1994. Tony, I understand when you were chair of the Marple Newtown Dems that you had minority registration somewhat significantly, but you still held, held power from 2007 to 2009. Is that correct? Yes. What factors enabled your committee to take power during those three years? Well, it, it had been building. We didn't just win in 2007. We had, we had uh, uh, reorganized in uh, 1994. We ran a full slate of candidates in 1995 for township and school board offices. Um, and in 1997, um, we uh, elected the first two Democratic Township Commissioners in Marple Township um, since, uh, I think, about 1983 or 80, 85. So it had been a, a good 10 years since we had won a, a local election. Um, and in 1997 in particular, we had three, we won two of the three seats up that year. We had, we had three very active candidates um, who campaigned on the issues. There were some issues that were very serious um, to the township government at the time. Um, and, and the candidates were very active. We had candidates who had been involved in government in some format uh, prior. Uh, one of them was a, a township commissioner who had been defeated for re-election um, four or six years earlier. Um, and uh, the other was uh, on the park and rec board. Um, and the third candidate was involved uh, in, in local activity. So we had good candidates. We won those two seats that year. Um, we had a very active campaign. We raised a good amount of money that, that year, 1997. And, I, and we took the Republicans by surprise, I think. They were shocked on election night. Um, they were not used to losing. They had, uh, they had won every election for a decade. They had uh, unchallenged control, as we talked about in, in part one. There was no Marple Democratic Party for a good four or five years in, in late, late 80s, early 90s. Um, and so they were definitely shocked in 1997. So every odd year thereafter, we tried to build on those two initial victories. In 2001, we elected a school board member um, uh, for the first time probably in, in 50 or more years. Um, and we did it by winning the Republican primary. And one of the things that we were able to take advantage of that year was the uh, infighting going on in the Republican Party as a result of our victory in 1997. So 97, November, we win. Um, the Republican Party starts a war with itself. Uh, the Republican chair is forced to resign because we lost. They lost that year. Somebody had to take the blame, I guess. And so the longtime Republican chair was forced out. They elected a new chair. The party was divided. The Republican Party was divided into two factions and remained so for a good um, five to eight years after. Um, and we were able to really take advantage of that and turn that into some victories. The Democrats also have a registration advantage at the county level, but have not been able to put a candidate in office. To what do you attribute the Democrats' inability to win a county election? 
So I don't think you can pinpoint just one factor. I think there's a number of reasons why. Um, and one of the one, ones that stands out to me is message. You have to have a message to win. We talked about this a little bit in part one. Um, and I think the county Democratic candidates, uh, uh, and, I don't, and I'm not targeting any individual, I'm saying globally, county Democratic candidates have to have a message that voters will listen to. You can't just go to a voter and say, we need a minority voice in government, vote for us. That doesn't work. And they haven't had a message, a strong message, traditional. I don't think they have. Um, as I said, when I ran in 2001, I tried to avoid that argument. Vote for us because we need minority uh, representation in government. I, I put out those five or six policy proposals. The, the, we what happens to be true, though, ironically, that is uh, something that weakens government if a minority voice is not heard. It, it is, absolutely. But that's not... The, the, that's not the motivating factor for a voter. Point well taken. Um, so message is key, uh, always, in any campaign. Um, I also think, you know, in, in back to Marple, we were running in a ward, uh, in a, you know, a, a three precincts. It's easier to, to, to run a campaign um, and, and focus on three precincts than, you know, 420 precincts countywide. Um, so I think that's a factor too. It's a larger jurisdiction, obviously. Um, organization, money, um, unity, all of those factors. Um, I mentioned, and, and, and the nature of campaigns. And I, I mentioned in part one, the years 2000 to 2006, when we really had momentum build up, our percentage of the vo county vote in odd years was increasing in, in 01, 03, 05. And something happened in 2007 that kind of stopped that momentum. And I think we're, we're still building from that. We had a primary in 2007 for county council, little negative. Um, I don't think the party necessarily came together after that primary. Um, there was one candidate who kind of ran his own campaign. And in my opinion, the campaign was overwhelmingly negative against the Republicans. Now, I'm not one to say, you know, tread lightly and, and, and being Mr. Nice Guy. When there are serious issues that warrants an attack on your Republican opponents, you do it on issues. Um, but I remember the campaign in 2007 in the fall as being extremely negative. And I think it was ref reflected in the results that year. Our, the, the county Democratic percentage of the vote in the fall of 2007 went down in 2007 for the first time in probably 10 years. Question to you, Tony, but don't the Republicans run a negative campaign every time a Democratic candidate seems strong? For instance, this year, for instance, against me in my 2012 state representative race, against John Cain in his senatorial race, doesn't negative campaigning seem to work? In cases it does. Um, it, has it worked for us, though? It hasn't. We didn't win in 2007, um, and I view that campaign very negative. And now let me another, make another point about Marple Newtown. In, in 2007 in Marple, when we took control, we did our share of, of uh, attacks on Republican candidates because we had really good issues that year. We weren't doing personal attacks. That's not what I'm talking about because I don't agree with the politics of personal destruction. These were um, issues where Republicans had screwed up and we called attention to it and that helped us win. So when there's an issue where your opponent has done something that's been detrimental to the, to the township or to the voters or, or to the government, you have to highlight that. Um, but clearly that has not worked for us at the county level. Um, you can't take, you can't run a campaign that only talks about your opponent's negatives. You have to, um, you have to uh, package that with your positive message. And so you need both. And as we talked about, I think that the Democratic Party in Delaware County needs to have its message, needs to get a message together. And is that where you're contrasting the negative campaigning of other tacticians like Roger Stone and Lee Atwater. They have a message to couple with their negative campaign. Well, if you look at it in, in those cases, um, they weren't necessarily uh, connected with their campaigns. Lee Atwater was, but Roger Stone, 
kind of did it. For Forget that. Stone. Let's just talk about Lee Atwater and the Boogeyman mm -hmm. and uh, him handling Bush's, Bush's or Reagan's, both of their campaigns. Right. Would you contrast that with this 2007 election or uh, that just negative campaigning for the sake of negative campaigning, stating that Atwater groups negative campaigning with a strong message. Well, if you look at the, the presidential campaign in 1988, George Bush ran on the Reagan record. That was his positive campaign. And obviously there were the negative attacks on Michael Dukakis. They were effective. Um, but I don't recall that being one-sided. They presented both sides of the argument. Here's why you shouldn't vote for Michael Dukakis. Here's why you should vote for George Bush. It worked that year. Um, but uh, in my experience, a campaign that only is negative, uh, and let's look at the presidential campaign in, in 2016. Hillary Clinton, she's been criticized for a lot of different reasons. But, uh, and, I, and I supported Hillary primary and in, obviously in the general. And so did Delaware County for that so matter. So did Delaware County, absolutely did. Um, her campaign had essentially no positive message about what she was going to do in the presidency. It was all attack her opponent. Now there were plenty of good reasons to attack her opponent. We all know that. Um, I mean, she didn't have to, all she had to do was put an image of, of Trump on the screen with his own words. But when, other than at the convention speech, did you ever see a, a TV ad from Hillary Clinton that said what she was going to do in office? Very rare. Please comment about the current race and the negative campaigning. So I, I'm not as, as connected as I was when I was a, a party officer. So I'm, I'm observing as, at a distance. I don't know the particulars of the campaign. Um, I don't read the Delaware County Daily Times on a regular basis. I do know um, the issue of corruption has come up. It always does. There are certainly valid reasons why Democrats should bring those issues up in, in county races. Um, and so I would not venture to guess what's going to happen on November 7th in the county races. Clearly, though, I have seen that um, I think the Republicans are, are threatened. They feel threatened. I don't know that I would say they're worried, but they feel threatened. Um, but uh, at the same time, I will say that if someone in my position, have this, my history in the Democratic Party, doesn't really know what the Democratic message is this year besides corruption, then does the average voter know what that message is? And so, again, third, third time I'll make this point, message wins the campaign. Um, I think Democrats need to have a positive message to go with their natural criticisms of the way the Republicans run Delaware County government. And a message that they at least attempted to put out for our viewers is the transparency reform and ethics reform and a no-tax pledge is at least. Tony, you did take control in Marple Newtown from 2007 to 2009, and then the party lost that majority. What factors went into losing control? That's a good question, and I'm glad you asked it, because uh, it was a very short-lived period of success there. Um, and I think the most important factor is um, infighting, unfortunately, the, the inability of people to work together and work as a team and and there are there were two and this goes back to recruiting the right candidates there were there were two um, township commissioners in Marple that we had elected uh, who simply could not work together um, they both let their egos get in the way um, they both maybe let power go to their heads a little bit and instead of uh, acting as a team they, you know, went off and, and tried to do their own thing to the detriment of the party, of our control, um, and so we lost it. And the, and the other, I think, really critical factor is, and I alluded to this earlier, um, the Republican Party had been divided and at war with itself since about 97 when we first won until, until 2007 when we took control. Um, and that really enabled us to take advantage of, of their weakness and elect, and elect people. One of, one of the people we elected was a Republican um, who had been a Republican member of the school board and uh, decided to run 
as a Democratic candidate, although she was a registered Republican, uh, in the fall of 2007 for first ward commissioner in Marple Township um, against the Republican incumbent. So we substituted out the candidate that ran in the primary and, and substituted this individual in. So she was a Republican fighting against her own party. She won that year. She defeated a Republican incumbent who happened to be the husband of the Republican Party chairwoman. Um, and so again, 2007, when we won control similar to 97, Republican Party chair was forced out um, and they got their act together after we took control of that township. They were astonished that we took control away from them. And that evidently lit a fire under them and, and they got together and said, look, we gotta stop the fighting. We lost control of the township. We're not gonna win it back if we keep fighting. Uh, they put their divisions to bed uh, and they successfully were, were able to, to defeat um, two of our incumbents uh, in the following election uh, and therefore take control of the township again. And so unity hurt them and then uh, disunity lack rather, of lack of unity hurt them and then getting together and, and healing the party divisions helped them. Um, and so there's a lesson to be learned there. A, was there also disunity in the county party for a time? There was, there still is uh, to a lesser degree. Um, but all throughout the, um, the 90s and, and, and uh, early and, and mid-2000s, there was division in the County Democratic Party um, because when Cliff was elected in 1994, the old guard who had been in control was no longer in control. Um, they didn't accept that and rather than sit down and work with the people who were in charge, um, they sowed division um, they planted negative stories in the press. They did everything they could to hurt our fundraising. They disparaged the party and its efforts with statewide candidates for governor, for senator, um, for other offices on the ballot. Um, and that held us back, no question. That held us back in the mid to late 90s and early 2000s, absolutely held us back. Now I'll ask you about the lesson to be learned from disunity. How does that affect a party's development or lack of success? Well, it directly leads to lack of success. And, and uh, uh, again, when our per the percentage of the vote was increasing, the registration was increasing late 90s and throughout the 2000s, we were getting closer to winning county races. Um, you know, we, we, I don't, I'm not gonna predict whether or not we could have won in 2007 or 2009 for county council, but certainly the divisions didn't help. Um, Again, they affected fundraising. They affected participation in the county by certain municipalities who didn't want to be involved with the county. They wanted to do their own thing. Um, I can't emphasize enough the lack of unity in a political organization. The lack of unity in any organization creates problems and impedes success. There's no doubt about that. Cliff Wilson discussed a lack of success or a time of democratic growth right after the Nixon era when the Republican Party was in disarray and their lack of unity certainly allowed the Democratic Party to grow and put candidates in office from 60, 1960 after the death of John McClure right up through I think he estimated 1980 or so if that's your recollection as well give well, or take yeah. I mean, the Democratic County Party in the 60s and 70s was very strong, um, much stronger than it was throughout the 80s, uh, and certainly in the wake of Watergate, when there was a sea change in Delaware County. Now, interestingly, a lot of people got elected in 74 because of Watergate, couldn't win re-election in 76 or 78. Um, and then Reagan came along, and the, the party, the Democratic Party nationally, um, wasn't particularly strong throughout the 1980s, and that clearly was the case in Delaware County as well. Tony, you discovered an email or letter, a letter, a letter from a Republican, a party official. We have a copy of it. You forwarded it to the Delaware County Times. Please describe it and discuss what it meant to you. 
So the reason, the, the way I, f I saw the letter was a Republican gave it to me on election day, uh, 2009 or 11. I, I honestly don't remember what year it was. Um, and the letter was from the chair of the Newtown Republican Committee to voters in Newtown Township uh, that essentially said Democrats and the Democratic Party are a cancer on society. Uh, now, by today's standards in 2017, maybe that's, uh, you know, fr from what we see from the president and his tweets, maybe that's uh, not as bad, but... He actually specified geography, didn't he? He did. He mentioned the city of Chester. So there was a racial, certainly a racial element Upper to Garvey, it as well. Upper Garvey, Southeast Delco, All correct. the places where there was an African-American population were mentioned in this letter, that Democrats from those areas, coming those from people, and coming from Philadelphia, right, are com creeping into Delaware County, and we we want to keep them out of Newtown Township. So not only was the term cancer offensive, because I've had family members die of cancer, but to suggest that minority voters are a cancer on Delaware County or any county or any government is a disgrace. It certainly was then. Now maybe in today's uh, politics where you know the, the Confederate statues are, are revered and honored even from the Oval Office, that might not seem so bad. But to suggest you know that uh, minorities are going to corrupt our communities was outrageous. Well let's, let's call it like it is, Tony. I mean it is still bad, however this bad is becoming accepted in the Oval Office, but we're still offended. Clearly there are some Republicans that will be offended by this, and, and, and I certainly don't paint a broad brush and say the entire Republican Party is racist. It's not. Um, I have friends who are Republicans. They're not racist. But there is an element of the Republican Party, there always has been, that has been racist. Um, the old, you, people argue to me, Republicans argue to me that the Democratic Party has its roots in, roots in racism in the South. Reconstruction, Civil War. Those old white Southern racist Democrats are Republicans today in Alabama and Mississippi. Um, and so it's just, it's, you know, the election of Barack Obama, I think, really crystallized this because there was an instantaneous, an instantaneous negative reaction among a, an element of the Republican Party to the election of a black man as president. And I think you certainly see that today with the way our politics are racially charged today. Um, so there's no question in my mind that letter, that's what we had started discussing this topic, the letter sought to, um, you know, the dog whistle, uh, you know, scare the, the, the voters of sleepy uh, suburban towns into thinking that Democrats were going to bring in those people from those parts of the city or from the city of Chester or from Darby and they're going to corrupt our, our, our township. Uh, just because we were all members of one party and because maybe some of those individuals donated to us. Democrats do this, in, or Republicans do this in Delaware County every single year. A candidate, Democratic candidate for any office gets a financial contribution from somebody with a Philadelphia zip code. All of a sudden it's the big bad city Democrats coming in to destroy Delaware County. It's absurd. It's dog whistle politics and voters uh, should just reject it. Well, Tony, that's all we have time for today. But I want to thank you for being a guest on Delaware County Political News. Enjoy being here, Larry. Thank you. We have been here with Tony Campisi, former chair of the Delaware County Democratic Party. And I am your host, Larry DeMarco. If you like this show, please forward to all of your friends on your contact list and Facebook friends. And like, follow, share, and subscribe. We're signing off. Tune in next time. Bye for now.